Thank you, Sabah. Well, Jeff, as you well know, the crux of the problem is that water is at the root of just about everything we do. From our economies and culture, to our ecosystems and health, from agriculture and drinking water, to transportation, hydropower, industry, and salmon, it all relies on a safe, stable supply of water resources. And worldwide, we're facing a crisis of massive proportions. Two and a half billion people, almost half the world's population, lack access to adequate sanitation. At least 250 million illnesses result. Two and a half to five million people die every year from a lack of safe, stable uh, water supply. Desertification, ecosystem degradation, loss of ag land, floods, droughts, and storms. In terms of sheer numbers, the water crisis is the most destructive problem facing humanity today. It's bigger than earthquakes and volcanoes, bigger than malaria and even AIDS. It's bigger than all the wars of any given year put together. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Aaron. I was in Ethiopia in January setting up an international water project in the Blue Nile Basin. And I would visit small villages where people were walking six hours a day just to fetch water. So this, idea, this water for poverty reduction is really a, a, a big issue. Uh, these problems are not just abstract global issues, but things that people are facing individually on a daily basis. On the science side, one of the biggest problems for making headway in this area is that we just don't fully understand how hydrological systems work. Basic questions of where water goes when it rains, how water recharges groundwater, how that groundwater gets into streams and controls flow and chemistry are really poorly understood. And our models for predicting how watersheds will respond to climate change and variability are weak and really don't capture a lot of these complex processes that interact and drive stream flow and water quality. In Oregon, we have access to an amazing outdoor laboratory. Uh, to study these processes with really a perfect storm of hydrologic regimes and ecosystem types to drive new theory and new discoveries. The Willamette River Basin is one of the best instrumented watersheds in the country, and this is where OSU hydrologists, I think, are really breaking new ground in terms of understanding how water cycles through the environment and where these approaches and new discoveries can help other areas of the state and of the country lacking this infrastructure. Another problem, Jeff, is that around the world at all scales, political boundaries absolutely ignore hydrologic boundaries, whether Arabs and Israelis, Indians and Pakistanis, or different users here in the U.S. West. People find themselves having to have rich conversations about their values and their future in order to manage their shared water resources efficiently. Here in Oregon, where we rely on a certain amount of stability to get water where it's need needed, major changes are coming in the next decade that could dramatically affect the availability and distribution of water resources. Climate change is melting our snowpacks, where we've effectively stored water for free. We're only now learning how to balance the needs of the environment with the economy. People are moving to parts of the state that have never needed water before, bringing with them new water quality concerns. And to top it off, we've got to renegotiate a new treaty with Canada on the Columbia, but this time to better incorporate the needs of tribal rights and ecosystems. Basically, we've got to learn how to think profoundly differently about water at lots of scales and around lots of issues. Fortunately, OSU is one of the few places in the world where we can have these conversations, where we can dialogue between scales and disciplines, include ecosystems in the economy, society and conflict. Here we recognize that water management is conflict management. In fact, our new program in water conflict management is designed to encourage just these sorts of conversations. Our certificate in water conflict is designed for grad students and professionals to learn how to dialogue better over shared water. We've developed the world's most comprehensive dispute database that catalogs global experiences in sharing waters from treaties and bibliographies to case studies and land use data. We led the creation of the university's partnership for transboundary waters that teams us up with colleagues from around the world so we can share information and experience across cultures and in diverse settings. These initiatives benefit Oregonians and the international community. In fact, just next week, representatives of the water ministries from five Nile Basin countries are coming here as guests of the State Department to learn how to better share this, their historic river. It's a great place for faculty and for students who really want to get water right. Yes, Aaron, I think at, at OSU we've got the breadth and the depth in the water area unsurpassed in the nation. We have over 120 faculty with research interests in water, and together with their postdocs, graduate students, and undergraduates who work in their labs and in the field, they're really creating a swirl of interdisciplinary activity in the water area. 
A great example of this is the new Institute for Water and Watersheds here at OSU that coordinates three new degree programs in water resources, science, engineering, and policy. This is one of only a very small handful of programs like it in the country that offer degrees in water resources and I think reflects the very low walls between departments and colleges and how well faculty from these different programs work together. OSU is also one of only three universities in the world that integrate science and policy and water resources at this level. And as Sabah mentioned in his introduction, when o UNESCO was looking for a U.S. university to partner with for its integrated watershed management program, it shows OSU. So I think what we do here in water at OSU matters. It matters to the state, it matters to the nation, and it matters to the world.